Hi students, we were talking about biodiversity and its conservation in the past class. Today also I have to continue about the lesson. Now today's topic is magnitude of biodiversity. That is what we have, that is the quantity. So anyway biodiversity is quantified as a number of species in a region at a given time. It is quantified as a number of species. That's the magnitude. How many species are present? Either in small numbers or more numbers. That's called the magnification we can see. Magnitude here referring to nothing but the size of the biodiversity. And it is being quantified. The biodiversity we can just quantify it in terms of numbers of species. As well as what we have in a specific region at a given time. Now, we have current estimate about the biodiversity. The current estimate of different species on Earth is around 8 to 9 millions. 8 to 9 millions. That's the total number of species. We have total number of species. At present, the current estimate on Earth is about 8 to 9 millions. Actually, we do not know the exact magnitude, that's the size of our world for natural world. We do not know the exact size of our natural world. This is called the taxonomic impediment. So, we are not knowing anything about the exact magnitude of our earth. That is with reference to the natural world. And this is called what is known as the taxonomic impediment. Not knowing about the exact world is called the taxonomic impediment. So far about 1.6 million species. So far about 1.6 million species of microorganisms, plants and animals have been described. That is one. So every year about 10 to 15,000 new species are identified and described worldwide. Identified that is actually published worldwide. Out of this 10 to 15,000 new species, nearly 75% of it are nothing but what we call the invertebrates. So, every year about 10 to 15,000 new species are identified and published worldwide, of which 75% are invertebrates. Okay, this is one statistics. Normally, we knew only few just number of species only described. The number of undescribed species is much higher. We knew only a few things, a few species, not much species, the natural will found on this earth. That's why we can say the number of undescribed species is normally much higher. This is another one. Okay, we have to go further. You know that one, India is rich in biodiversity. Why? Because of its unique biogeographical what is called location, the diversified climatic conditions and enormous eco-diversity and geodiversity. Enormous eco-diversity and geodiversity. Now normally India is rich in terms of biological diversity. What's the reason for that one? So India is rich in terms of biological diversity. What are the reasons? India has biogeographical location, a suitable biogeographical location. So it is unique for India. And also it has diversified climatic conditions. And also it shows enormous co-diversity, that is eco-diversity and geodiversity. It shows enormous eco-diversity and geodiversity. These are all the reasons why India is rich in terms of biodiversity. These are all the unique features of what we call India for having richest source of biodiversity. Now we have a classification proposed by the World Organization. Now according to World Biogeographic Classification, a definite a stable classification has been made. That is called World Biogeographic Classification. India represents two major realms and three biomes. Two major realms and three biomes. The two major realms are one, polyoptic realm. Number two, 
Indomalayan realm. These are the two major realms. What are the three biomes that what we have in India? Number one, tropical humid forests. Number two, tropical dry or deciduous forests. Number three, warm deserts or semi deserts. So this is how what we have the classification based on world biogeographic classification. Now let's continue. With only about 2.4 percent of the world's total land surface, India is known to have nearly 8 percent of the species of animals that the world holds, that the world has. This percentage of 8 accounts for about 92,000 just known species. 92,000 known species, it is equal to 8 percent of what we have the species of animals of the total population in the world. Now, if you are taking India, India is the seventh largest country in the world in terms of what is called area. So it has a variety of ecosystems and biomes with the habitats. What are the different types of habitats? For example, hills, valleys, the plateaus, the seashores, the mangroves, estuaries, the glaciers, grasslands and river basins. Now, this one also reflects different kinds of climates, precipitation, temperature distribution, river flow and soil. So, this is being normally exhibited by India. India is one of the 17 mega biodiversity centers in the world. That means we have totally in the world 17 mega biodiversity centers are available. With nearly 10 biogeographical zones. And each one is with a characteristic habitat and then biota. Each what we have the biogeographical zone as a characteristic habitat and biota. Now let's go to the next two one, the pattern of biodiversity distribution. Now the distribution of plants and animals are not uniform around the world. So it is unequal, unevenly distributed. Now the organisms require different sets of conditions for the optimum what is called metabolism and growth. So within this optimal range, the number and the variety of organisms likely to occur, multiply and grow. Now the habitat conditions are determined by mainly two factors. One, the latitudes and altitudes. Habitat conditions are determined by two factors. One, latitudes and then altitudes. Now we have to go for the next one, latitude and altitude gradients. That is the range from poles to tropic region, how many species are present, what is happening from poles to tropics, from poles to temperate and also to tropic region. So we have to see the biodiversity whether it is increasing from poles to tropics or from tropics to poles. Let's see. We already see the conditions of habitat are determined by latitudes and then altitudes. Okay, now let's see the latitudinal and altitudinal gradients. Now, what are the factors that determine biodiversity distribution pattern? What are the factors that design biodiversity distribution pattern? Number one, temperature. Number two, precipitation. Number three, distance from the equator. That is called latitudinal gradient. Distance from the equator, that is called latitudinal gradient. Then altitudes from the mean sea level altitudes from the mean sea level that is called altitudinal gradient. These are all the factors which decide and determine what we have biodiversity distribution pattern. Now if you are taking this just you see altitudinal and then latitudinal gradients. Out of these two which is more important? The more important one is a latitudinal gradient. The most important pattern of biodiversity is normally latitudinal gradient in biodiversity or simply we can say in diversity. So the latitudinal pattern of biodiversity 
is the most important one in diversity. So the most important pattern of biodiversity is the latitudinal gradient just from poles to tropics. As the gradient means increase in number from poles to tropics, decrease in number from tropics to poles. That is called the gradient. Distribution. Number of individuals. Variability among living organisms. What we can say the diversity. Now, what is the meaning for that one? So, this means that there is an increasing in diversity. I mentioned already. From the poles to the equator. So, there is increase in what is called diversity from the poles to the tropics or we can say the equator. So, increase in diversity occurs from the poles, north poles or south poles to what we have actually that is the mostly north poles. Now, diversity increases as the one moves from what we have the poles towards the temperate zones and reaches the maximum at the tropics. So, diversity increases from what is called actually one moving towards the temperate zones and reaches the maximum at the tropics. The meaning for that one, the poles have less number of species, we'll have the example. Then we have the temperate zones, they have somewhat increased number of species. And we have the maximum number of species of diversity one in the tropics, that's the meaning for that one. So the tropics harbor, just accommodate, the means accommodate more biodiversity than what we call the temperate or polar regions. It harvests means it accommodates more biodiversity than what we call the temperate or polar regions. Especially between what we have the latitudes of 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south. That is normally Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn. From Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn. So the biodiversity normally increases. This is because of various factors. We'll see for the one the environmental conditions, we have the availability of resources, etc. Let's see later now. So tropics accommodates harboring more biodiversity than temperate or polar regions. Comparison. So we have less number of species in post, somewhat more number of species in the temperate regions, and we have maximum number of species at the tropics. So it is ranging from 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south, that is from Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn. Let's see the number of species in the polar regions, in the temperate zones, and also in the case of tropics. The number of species of trees increases from what we have the poles, then to the temperate zones, and then to what is called the tropical regions. Now we are talking about the latitudinal and altitudinal gradients. I already mentioned about the most important diversity is the latitudinal gradient. In all that one, the harsh conditions exist normally in temperate areas, but we have very harsh conditions exist throughout the year and most of the year, particularly in the case, in the case of polar regions. For comparing the climatic conditions, we have harsh conditions exist in temperate areas during the cold seasons only. But in the case of that is what we have, polar regions, the very harsh climate conditions prevail most of the year. That's the main difference. Sir. Climate is very harsh most of the year in polar regions and just actually during winter or during cold seasons, we have that is a uh, harsh climate exists. It's not very harsh, harsh climate. Now we have to compare. I mentioned already increasing biodiversity from what is called the polar regions towards the tropics or just decreasing what we have actually the biodiversity from the tropics to or uh, tropics towards what we call the polar regions. Now example number one for hot climate or tropic regions. Now, Colombia, it is located near the equator, that is in the tropical region. There's nearly 1,400 species of birds. This is in tropics. Now, the next one, the temperate zone. For example, New York, it is at 41 degree north. It has one or five species of birds, that is the temperate zone. Now, the next one, Greenland, it is at 71 degree north. That is nearly the polar region. 
it has only 56 species of birds. So, the species diversity or biodiversity decreases from the tropics towards what we have the Pama regions. This is in tropics, this is in temperate zones and this is in the case of what is called the polar regions. Okay, declining. Now, suppose you are taking India. Normally, India having much of its land area near the equator on the tropics. Near the equator and tropics, much of the areas. Not all, but much of the just land areas of India located near the equator or in the tropics. It is about 1200 species of birds near the equator or near what we call the tropics, about 1200 species of birds. So, anyway, thus the latitude increases species diversity. This is what we have latitudinal gradient. The latitude increases species diversity, that is from what is called the polar regions towards the tropics. Now, let's see what about the altitudinal gradient in biodiversity. Now, the decrease in biodiversity occurs when you are just reaching high mountains. So, decrease in diversity occurs as one ascends the high mountain. This is because of drop in temperature. As the temperature decreases, automatically the diversity also decreases. Because while we are going up to the mountains, the temperature decreases at 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer above the mean sea level. Above the mean sea level. I'll tell you what I mean by mean sea level later. So anyway, temperature decreases at 6.5 degrees per kilometer above the mean sea level. So the drop in temperature is a main cause for decreasing the biodiversity or declining of biodiversity from valleys or from the plains to what are the mountains. What are the reasons for the richness of biodiversity in tropics? A number of reasons. Reason number one. See the warm tropical regions between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn on either side of the equator possesses congenital climates or congenital habitats, congenital habitats for a number of living organisms. So presence of congenital habitats that is on either side of what we call the equator that is between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. That is one of the reasons why we have more that is our richness of our species, our richness of biodiversity in tropics. The second one, environmental conditions. Now the environmental conditions of the tropics are normally suitable. You know that one are favorable. Not only the formation of new species, what is called the speciation, but also supporting actually both variety and number of organisms. So it is not only for actually the environmental conditions favor not only the formation of species, what we can say the speciation, but also for supporting the number and variety of organisms. The third one, what we call the temperature. So the temperature vary between 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. That is a suitable temperature for most of the bi biological activities or the biochemical activities or the metabolic activities of living organisms. So metabolic activities occur with ease and efficiency at this temperature. So there is a suitable temperature that is 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius for various metabolic or biochemical activities and that occur with ease and efficiency. Even if you are taking the rainfall, the average rainfall throughout the year in tropics is about 200 millimeter. That is also one of the favorable conditions are suitable for the richness of biodiversity in tropics. Okay, two more reasons we'll see now. The other reasons for the richness of biodiversity in tropics are the average rainfall which is more than 200 millimeter per year. Then we have the climatic conditions, the seasons, the temperature, the humidity and photo periods are more or less stable and encourage both variety and number of species because of all these factors more stable which encourage normally that is the which encourage both variety and number of species that's one of the reasons you know that one environmental conditions favor the number and variety of species and that results in what we call species richness and also biodiversity 
Then, the last one, rich resources, the available resources for living. The rich resources and the nutrient availability, which are the major factors favoring the growth and development of the individuals. They are also rich. So we have resources and nutrient availability, which is normally more than that for what are the temperate zones and polar regions. Now, what do you mean by main sea level? You have observed different places. Just in some places, it is mentioned about 1,700 meters above the main sea level. So this is an average. Okay, it is an average level of the surfaces of one or more Earth's oceans or the seas, from which we can measure the height, such as elevations. And that is called what is known as main sea level. So from which heights such as elevations can be measured. So it is an average level of the surface of one or more Earth's oceans or we have what we call the seas from which heights such as elevations can be measured above the sea level. Sea level is a base above the sea level for example could Econom or we have some other places say an example Uti. So what is the elevation above the mean sea level? So sea level above which only we have the land surface. That's why the mean sea level, mean sea level is considered as an what we have unit to find out the elevations. For example, E road junction, it is above, actually we can say above or above 171 meters, mean sea level, or about we can say above also because the word is given after that is about 171 meters above mean sea level. This is one example, like we are taking Kodakonal or Everest, etc. They are high altitudes. They are normally more meters in elevations than what we were the mean sea level. So, Eero Junction is about 171 meters above mean sea level. So, with that, I concluded about what we have biodiversity and it's what we have um, distribution pattern, biodiversity distribution pattern of different types. And then we have mentioned about the latitudinal now altitudinal gradients it's normally the number of individuals increasing the richness of species increases from what we have the polar regions then to temperate regions and then to what is called the tropics the tropics ex exhibit higher concentration or richness of species because of the reasons what i mentioned here it's also a very important question as per the examination is concerned what are the factors responsible for increasing the richness of what is called biodiversity that is in tropics. With that I concluded, we have to proceed the next one, species, area, relationship and other things. Okay, I'll take that one in the next class. Till then, goodbye.